Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, you are in a new month and this is the first day of the month of July, which is the second half of the year. Hey, listening to me, God's special plans for your life is being established. Hear me, this year is still the good year that God spoke to you about. It is, and He is doing everything possible to get you in the place that he has ordained for you. Now that's God's heart for you. And your own part is to obey him. Your own part is to follow him. Praise God. Are we ready for today's broadcast? Now with new vigor in your heart, let's make our demands for our daily bread. Are you ready? Say this after me. Say, Father, today, the first of the month, the first day of the month of July, I demand and I receive my daily bread it's coming to me now throughout this month of july i will lack nothing i receive every blessing everything that you have for me in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you lord in jesus name amen and it's coming to you see jesus said by your words you shall be condemned by your words you shall be justified i declare by your words you are being justified throughout this month in the name of the lord jesus christ praise god let's pray that father we bless you even for this new month and thank you for the opportunity to bring forth your truth holy spirit we give you praise because i know burdens are being lifted right now yokes are being destroyed right now in the name of the lord jesus supernatural things taking place in our lives thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray amen now hear me this month you are going to experience a lot of supernatural things i'm telling you the truth the lord is causing us to begin to walk in a supernatural dimension of things now hear me last month i was sharing with you on the, the 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 purpose the hope and the manifestation of god's calling in our life now this month you are begin you are going to start manifesting the calling of god in your life now that's 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 what the lord is going to be doing in you he's going to be causing you to manifest you manifest your visions, you manifest your callings, you manifest everything that the Lord has put inside of you. You will begin to manifest it. And hear me, this manifestation is not sensual. See, there is a supernatural dimension of our life if you are a child of God. Our Father is a supernatural God. And His dealings with us is not just physical. There is a supernatural dimension and the earlier you believe that the better for you you are not alone i'll read a scripture to you in colossians chapter 4 and verse 17 paul speaking here colossians 4 17 paul speaking and he says and say to archippus take heed to the ministry which you which thou has received in the lord that thou fulfill it now this is an instruction paul was giving to a friend he said tell him he should take heed to the ministry that god has given him that he fulfills it now for you to fulfill god's calling for your life there is the supernatural dimension to it that is what proves that god is in your life if everything about you is just physical normal everything is just normal oh you graduate from graduated from school yes you did well in school yes and then you you got a good job yes and then you are being paid well and then you get married you have children, you send them to the good schools, you live in a good area of town, everything looks okay and fine and, and stuff. You know what? You don't necessarily, you, or you don't really have a testimony that God is with you. You can say, oh, I thank God though, you know, that God is with me. God has helped me, he helped me to come out of school with good grades and see now because I came out of school with good grades. No, sir. No, that's not how the God, not, that's not how God works. Now, it's good to do well in school. It's good to have a good job. It's good to excel in whatever you are doing. But let me tell you this, 
you as an individual you you see if god is involved with your life there are things in your life that you will know there is no explanation to fill up that gap i'm telling the truth you will know you will know so the kind of even the kind of job you're going to get you will look at it again and again and again and you tell yourself that look mm -mm. I don't know how those people got my number to call. I have asked that question severally and I've not gotten a tangible answer that makes sense. I've even submitted my CV to that place. No, I didn't know. I just prayed and said, God, I want to walk in the place that you've ordained for me. And he caused it to be. Now that's how you know God is involved with my life. Hear me, hear me. This month of July, keep your mind on the supernatural intervention of God in your affairs. That must happen. That must take place. Because I hear the Lord say, I'm, 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 I've gotten into that season, I'm beginning to separate my children. And how will he separate his children? I was telling you yesterday and two days ago that it is by obeying instructions. God gives instructions and we obey. Now when we obey those instructions, supernatural things happen so you do your part and be at peace and allow god to do his part now god's part involves the supernatural part there must be something supernatural maybe the doctors have told you you have a few weeks or a few months to leave maybe they have told you they saw something in your body it's not a problem it's okay they've done their part now you know why you're having that pain now you know why you're suffering that that ailment in in in, in your body but hey you take it before the lord now listen to me i teach you in a way that you don't necessarily need someone you alone do it yourself and you get a miracle. You take that report before the Lord and you lay it before him and say, Father, I want us to talk. Okay, Lord, I want to know from you, is this the plan that you had for me before I was born? Is this where your vision will lead me? And I say, eh, but, but, but it's not that I was following God do. Yes, yes, today, today, now you've realized that you need God. So it's the same thing. It applies. I said, Lord, I just want to know if this is what you have really, really planned for me, then fine. Let it be among your testimony that you plan such things for us. But if this is not the plan, there is no way you will ask God a question like that. That is not going to come true. See, sometimes because you got the doctor's report, hey, no, I reject it. I reject it. Rakubaya, guagaguade, magababa. I reject it. I reject. What are you rejecting? You're not dealing with the issue. You see, that's that's the problem we make most times. We think we are walking by faith, but we are not walking by faith. We're walking by fear. Someone who's praying and saying, I reject, I reject. Why are you rejecting? In your mind, you're thinking, so, so that's how this thing will now kill me. Ah, I reject it, I reject it. So that's how then everybody now knows that. Ah, no, I reject it. That's what you're doing. Fear, you're responding to fear. First of all, be calm. Be calm. Don't be afraid. That's why you see Jesus every time he shows up in a situation like that, the first thing he will say, fear not. Even the angels, when they show up, they say, fear not. Get that terrifying thought out of your mind, first of all. If you're going to walk with God, you must deal with fear. How do you deal with fear? I told you this many years ago, or I've been telling you this. The opposite of love is fear, not hate. If you don't have love in your heart, it's because you are afraid. And if you have fear, you cannot love. That's why John told us, there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. So the thing that opposes love is fear. Get fear out of the way, love is restored. Praise God. Yeah. So when you receive a report, a bad report, maybe bills, maybe your health, whatever bad report it is, you receive it. First thing you must do is get fear out. 
get fear out. I'll tell you how to get fear out. <laughs> Hebrews. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13. And verse 5. Watch this now. He says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. Now, this is a principle of working with God. First of all, he said, Let your manner of life, let your conversation be without covetousness. I told you what covetousness is yesterday also. See, it's the thinking in you that feels by what you own you have advantage or by what you don't own or because you don't own something you are disadvantaged that is covetousness so now he says get it out of your system be aware of it so when you see covetousness coming this way you you just dodge it and go your other way so he says be be, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. Now look at that. He says, be okay with whatever you are given. That's, that's actually what he's saying. Be okay with whatever thing you are given. Why should I be okay with everything? Why should I be okay? So when the doctors give me a doctor's report, I should just walk out there. And, now that's how you act. You act. Is that all? So yeah, all right. Thank you. You take it and you're not like, hey, God, oh, so I'm going to die. Oh, God, oh, no, 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 no. But sometimes, yo, they, oh, we just called you for a contract. Okay. And then they finished telling how wonderful this contract is. I said, is that all? Okay, yeah. Thank you very much. You don't get, hey, praise God. Ah, hey, hey. The first thing you should think about is, okay, Lord, what was the purpose for this for my life now? I want to know so I know how to appropriate it. You see, that excitement, now, it is after you understand the purpose, then the excitement will come. So the same thing, you get a bad news, bad news, you say be content. First, be contented. Okay, right. No problem. And then you take it. Now, why is he telling you to be content? He said, be content with such things as you are. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So when I, when I get that kind of report and, and I'm thinking, all right, so, um, all right, so not a problem. Why is it not a problem? Because he's with me. So what's he doing with me? He's going to tell me what to do next. That's the secret. <laughs> you get it now? Why should I be calm? Because he's with me. He's going to tell me exactly what to do next. And whatever he tells me, I'm going to follow. You know what I'm going to follow? Because I know his thoughts concerning me. They are good. There is no evil in his heart concerning me. So the doctors did their thing and they said, this is what we found. Thank you, sir. Not a problem. All right, I'm going home. Then you get to me and say, Lord, okay, let's talk about this now. What's the plan? What would you have me do? What would you have? How would you have me deal with this issue? Because I don't think this is your plan for my life. Oh, is it? Praise <laughs> God. Of course it's not God's plan. Now watch this. It says, is, I will never leave thee nor forsake you, so that you may boldly say. Now, this is the reason he is with you. This is the reason he is telling you that he is with you, so that you will boldly say. What would you boldly say? The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Now, when he says, I will not fear what man, he says, I will not fear what anything within the reach or region of man. I will not fear what it can do to me. So I will not fear what an earthquake can do to me. Can do to me. I will not fear what whatever. Just think of whatever thing you can think about. I will not fear what it will do to me. Why? Because the Lord is with me. Now that's how to get fear out of your system. The realization. Now this is a scripture you must meditate until it becomes into your bloodstream. Write it on your walls. Write it everywhere. This scripture, Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Write it everywhere until it gets into your system that God is with me. That's why I will never be afraid. Why? Because I can always ask him what he wants me to do. And he will tell me what he wants me to do. And fear is of the system. Praise God. Did you get that now? Did you get that? I'll see you 
um, if you're joining the prayer meeting online via Zoom, I'll, I'll see you then. Or if not, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.